Up next tonight, this is actually a uh, subscriber question. And uh, by the way, thank you guys for some of the great show ideas on a video that I posted about a day ago. Uh, I wanted to see specifically what you guys wanted to um, see from this point forward. I'm always looking for more material. And uh, while I'll deliver on my behalf some of the things I think are worthwhile to talk about in the coin collecting field, or hobby rather, uh, it's always good to get a general consensus among you know the folks that have supported me for the last, oh, seven years. Yeah, it's been seven years since I started this channel. So thank you again. Love you guys. Appreciate it. And today we're going to talk about um, candy half dollars. And most specific, uh, the, the subscriber had mentioned that they, they coin roll hunt pretty regularly. Uh, from what he said, um, like three or four boxes a week. I, I mean, you know, kudos to you for, for even finding a bank that'll provide that volume of change without, you know, val volume of wrapped half dollars, which are extremely difficult to find in some areas. But he had a question on these not intended for circulation half dollars. Um, he said, Blue Ridge, I've assembled about $20 face over the last year in these uh, kind of obsolete. And what I mean obsolete is they're, they're you know, just as they're uh, described, these are not made for general circulation use. Okay, they're a, uh, a collector stronghold, so to speak, from the mint. Uh, for a P&D set, I believe they ask $6.95 for the two-coin set. So that's that's where that comes from. Uh, so this is a 2008 P, and if I may, let me grab my red book to give you an idea of the mintage disparities between the regular circulation issues from like the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and early 2000s until they made that transition to completely discontinue production for regular circulation use. And it's always good to know, uh, based off of those figures, exactly what we're talking about. So this is a page for from the Red Book uh, of the... Kennedy half dollars, and you go all the way to 2000. This this wraps up this page. So 2000 P and D, nice healthy numbers, 22 million and 19 and a half million. Uh, the price, of course, is subjective because um, everything is sold in real time today via auctions and um, various online portals for selling coins. But let's see if I change the page here. I'm hoping there will be. There we go. So as you can see, so 2001, they were still producing pretty heavy amounts for circulation. And then 2002 is when the U.S. Mint had decided to convert over to strictly not NIFC regulated coins, okay? Which simply means, you know what, we're not going to produce these based off of consumer demand for regular circulation use because they're not being used. It's almost like the gold dollars, the presidential dollars. Those things are a turd because nobody wants to spend them. They're big, they're bulky, uh, you know, it's just, it doesn't make sense. So for the 2002 era, you could see how the mintages went from, let's say on average, 20 million pieces down to 10% of that amount, 2.5 million for the D mint mark in 02. The Philadelphia is 3.1, but yet the prices stay the same. Okay, and I'll use this as kind of like a generalistic point of view for pricing. Uh, so, regardless of where you're looking at, and actually the price goes down the newer the coin gets, there is one exception here, and I'm not sure why, 2005, the mintages are higher, but apparently they're asking $4 for Mint State 63. So, I don't know, that, that just seems a little bit too out of place. But as you can see, going along the line here, the mintages get really low in the early 2000 teens. And um, you get here to 2013, it ramps up to 5 million. 
Okay, and what's cool here is from 2014 and up, they begin to make high relief versions of the coins. And in fact, I have a few examples of those specific high relief coins that I'm gonna show you. But what exactly are we looking at here in terms of collectability? Okay, they're inexpensive to find, okay? If you're able to find a few of these in circulation or coin roll hunting, uh, me personally, I would certainly put them aside. And what I would probably do is um, differentiate the high relief versus the low relief. And high relief just means it's like a deeper dish with, with the details of candy kind of like popping off, almost like a pop-up book, so to speak. The 2008 is one I pulled out out of circulation a while ago. And uh, it's worth no more than face, I'll be honest with you. Um, what is attractive is you accumulate enough of these that you could build full rolls and sell them in that fashion. Um, face value, you know, what was it? 10 or $20, depending on the size wrapper that you have, you assemble that many and you, you could probably make 25 to 50% more over face because they're in a, um, NIFC with lower mintage. So that's a low relief, low, low relief 2008, and the high relief is the 2015. You can tell just in the luster, okay, and the coin is deeper dished, which I believe is a really attractive feature on the high relief coins in comparison to the 2008, uh, which is, you know, most of the dates after 2001. And um, I actually have a P&D set of the high relief. And... I found both of these coin roll hunting. Uh, actually, ironically, they were in the same roll. So someone had taken these to the bank and they had cashed them in, deposited uh, them or what have you um, in lieu of getting some money in their bank account or cashing them in for quick cash. But if I found these in circulation, I would certainly keep them. They are super attractive, and these these are almost problem free to the point where they're going to sell for a premium. Not much of a premium. I, I'm you know it, would it be worth it to list them on eBay as a buy now for say six ninety five? Not if you could get them from the mint directly for that much. Um, you know, of course they only sell the current date coins, so the two thousand fifteens. Um, all in all, I I would probably stay away from trying to sell individual coins like this on eBay for the mere fact that you also have to take into account eBay fees, PayPal fees, shipping, uh, you know, and it could be more of a hassle than it is something that you could, you know, enjoy and make a few bucks on. They're really cool coins. They're low mintage, whether or not they're going to have a huge impact in numismatics from this point forward remains to be seen. If the U.S. Mint decides to completely cancel the Kennedy series because it's just a, a stinker to this point, and let's be honest, it has been in terms of um, commerce, uh, then you know what? That might drive um, uh, some desirability in those coins in the future. You know, much like some of the, the earlier coins from like the 1800s, the Seated Liberties. You know, you'll have um, a block of certain dates like after 18 say 69 1870 they're gonna be super low mintage okay and that's just based off of demand there isn't a whole lot there so they end up minting 11,000 and 25,000 and there's just not a lot but uh sorry to take up so much of your time that kind of explains the nifc Half dollars. Uh, they're uh, they're not really an oddity because they look like all the other ones. But in terms of collectability, yeah, definitely keep them aside. Uh, I would say hoard them the best that you can and then sell them as full rolls. That's where you're going to make your money off of and then feel good about turning around. You know, a little bit of profit. It's not a lot, but if you need to move it and make a few bucks, um, you could certainly do that uh, as opposed to taking it to the bank. All right, so if you like uh, tonight's content, go ahead and give me a huge like. All right, I appreciate you guys again. And again, I'm Blue Ridge Silverhound. I got my subscription button at the end of the video. You can probably see it right now. I appreciate your guys' time, and I'll talk to you soon. Keep, keep hunting, 
and um, yeah, enjoy it. Take care.